Hi everyone, Tristan here with SUV RVing. We have another great adventure mobile tour for you today. I'm here with Courtney. She has a 2017 Jeep Compass. She's also a YouTuber. She has a couple of channels that I think you guys would be interested in. We'll go into that a little bit more later. Uh, all the things that we talk about in this video, all the gear and uh, links to everything will be included in the video description, including links to her channels. So let's, uh, let's turn it over to, to Courtney and have her show us her vehicle. I'm Courtney. I am a weekend car camper, so I made my SUV into something I could sleep in, but I also use it for just regular driving. So it's very basic. It's very easy for me to pull things out. It's usually just me and my dog. She's sitting over there um, because she's got some shade and she's a little high energy, so we thought she'd be better over there. Um, but this is a very basic setup. I have my bed. There's three main things I spent money on. One was the mattress, which is a trifold mattress. And that I got because I wanted to easily be able to store it in my storage shed at home. And there's kind of this convenient bag that comes with it. I believe this is a three or four inch. Um, it cost about $90, I believe, when I bought it. So it was a little bit of an investment, but I think it was just really perfect for me. I also have a sleeping bag. We're in the desert right now in a heat wave, so this is actually not really needed. This is, I believe, a 20 degree. Um, when it's winter camping for me, I use, I bring some layers, so it's not just this. When it's summer, I usually just use my blanket to cover up, and that's about it. Um, this, actually, sheet is pretty perfect. Um, I can't remember what brand it is, but I'll try and find the link. Um, these ties make it really great because it keeps the sheet in place. And sometimes when you're car camping, you're moving things around. So um, that is a, a great option. This little area right back here, I've got two of these. One that I'll have at campsite, one that I'll kind of keep in the car. I've got some bear locks down here. And I've got a little <laughs> bottle opener that I got as a gift. So there is, I think, a plug right here. Um, this is how you close the um, back end. But nothing is underneath this except a spare tire, which for me is important because I do go out alone. I would eventually maybe like to put the tire on the back of the car and use that space to have more, more storage space, but for now this really works. These three bins are pretty much where I keep the majority of my stuff. So I, it's, they get a little dirty, um, and this is not a permanent option. This is kind of something that was just temporary. My mom had a few of these bins, and um, they fit. So why not use something free? Um, but because they are white and because I kind of use this as, you know, an end-all, be-all table, no matter how many times I clean it, it just kind of looks a little, a little dirty. But this top one is the one I use the most. This is where I keep most, most, most of my kitchen stuff. So um, usually I don't have too much food in here. This trip, because it's desert, it's not bear country, um, I didn't mind. But we've got some dishes back here. We've got, I used some mason jars earlier on the trip. Um, some cutting board. This is a great thing. You see my plates. Um, I bought this on, I think, Amazon, and it's just a full set of all the appliances you could need. Um, I do a lot of cooking when I camp. I have a Coleman stove. I didn't bring it this trip because it's hot and I don't want to cook this trip, but this has pretty much everything I could need. I purchased these little kit, these little sets of silverware. So I have kind of two of everything in case a friend is with me or if I make a friend on the road. So I kind of have everything that I need. A couple pans, some, a couple bowls, a couple plates, and um, obviously my propane for the stove. So we'll just kind of move this. This is kind of a little nook that I keep my bag, my day pack in. I go on a lot of hikes with the dog. I don't have a lot of other equipment because I do have a dog and so I need to be able to do stuff with her. But this bin is just a hodgepodge of stuff, some Lysol wipes. These are those little shades that when you're in, it's kind of the netting. So you wrap it around the car window and um, you close the door and then it lets you keep the, the windows down but keeps the bugs out. So there's two of those. This is my toilet, <laughs> which is pretty small. It's a shovel nothing too exciting and some Kleenex wipes. Um, I mostly try to find um, 
you know, trailheads have toilets, uh, porter potties, that kind of stuff. This is a great option if you can't find, you know, a gas station or something. I don't mind. I've done some backpacking and this is just easy. And uh, so definitely doesn't phase me. I know you can build out some toilets and stuff. It's just not something I need. So map, some, some bear spray, all that kind of stuff. And then this last one is more, um, I've got a little dishwashing set up, just some wipes for me if I get a little too dirty on the hike. Another light, some uh, filtration system. I think underneath there is some safety stuff back here. So just a little hodgepodge. I have more than I need, but one of the main things for me as a weekend camper, I don't want to think about what I'm doing. I just want to be able to throw stuff in a car and go. And um, so some of this stuff is more, it's, it's a little too much for just weekends, but I feel like I have everything everything that I need. So if you want to come around here, my setup is a little funky in that um, I have this trifold mattress and it doesn't fit. It's too long. So just to show you the side angle, I kept my seat in with the headrest and it's a little angled, but it doesn't phase me. It just kind of puts me in a slant up. My head goes that direction. And the mattress just kind of folds over like that, which actually provides a little lift. I typically put the pillow back here. That also kind of props fills in that area. And, um, you know, I usually am on flat ground. Being a little angled doesn't phase me. I know some people really need flat, but it just kind of works for me. If I did want to utilize this entire mattress, I could move the seat forward all the way and build something to kind of create a flat surface. But for me, I'm 5'5". Five five. This is the perfect length for me, so that's about it. Down here is a little two-part holder. It's just, um, I don't I bought that before I started car camping. Just a little storage container. This is my main water jug. I think it's a five gallon. And usually what I'll do is I will lean it like this and I'll fill up my, my bottles right here. I keep it this way so it doesn't leak everywhere. This was pretty cheap, um, so nothing to write home about. Back here, if I can grab it. These are some window coverings. I have window coverings for every single window, including these little baby windows. Um, there's two main companies that, that make them. One is Heat Shield, one is WeatherTech. WeatherTech didn't make them for my vehicle. Heat Shield did. There was a little bit of a mix up. I guess they changed body styles of my car the same year and so when I got my um, covers, they didn't fit perfectly. They tried to remedy the situation. So, I mean, it works for me. This was an investment. So this cost, I believe about $200 for all of the windows, but they're convenient. So those are most of them. On the other side of the water bottle or the water container is some more water. Um, when you're in the desert, it's hot. <laughs> and if you're out doing dispersed camping, which is the kind of camping I typically do, free, public land, it's really important to have more than you need of food and water. So usually I have an extra day or two of food and water just to be just to be safe. So I've got some extra water back there. Some of the things like these areas right here, I don't use. I know if you are a full time living in your vehicle, you're probably going to want to use every nook and cranny. I go out for three to four days at a time, two times a month. For me, it's it's a, it's a regular vehicle too. And that's really important that I kind of keep it somewhat easy. So that's this side. And I do bring a pillow. If I forget a pillow, I'll usually use a jacket or something. It's no big deal, but um, no complaints. Everything seems to work really well. And uh, let's go on to, I guess the front seat, there's really not much to show right here. When I drive, everything is empty in the front. Um, we're in kind of sleep mode right now. But I, in case I'm at a trailhead or in case I'm parked somewhere, I just don't want to bring attention to the fact that I have too much in the car. These windows are um, tinted back here, so I'm not too worried about the back, but you know, a lot of people just kind of want to snoop in. And so everything in the front goes back here. I also didn't show you back, tuck back this way. If you can kind of see back there, I keep my camp chair. It's just a Walmart brand. It's a great little chair. I don't think it was very expensive, maybe. 
fifteen dollars um, but it's very compact i also keep a couple books down there i also have luna's hiking pack and um, when i go for longer hikes with her she takes her own water and her own snacks because she needs to do a little work too so that um, in an ideal world i would have something built for this space and it would fit perfectly and that i think will happen it's just not needed in, until these are kind of run down and i'm exploring options but when i'm going to drive mode all i do is I flip this up. I wanna keep it low enough to where I have some visibility to be able to drive and see out the back. But this is where I put my Yeti cooler and I usually put my stove behind it. I'll put a blanket or something to go in between so it doesn't make any rattling noises. And this just kind of fits great. If it's winter, if I've got snow chains, if I have some logs um, or wood to burn, anything like that, I'll kind of arrange it here. But this is kind of the only difference with drive mode is I take everything from the front and I put it back here. All right, let's go to the other side. So I travel with my dog all the time. Um, she's an important part of my trips. Uh, we're limited on where we go. National parks are very restricting for dogs and there are just certain locations. Uh, Big Sur is hard to take dogs, but we do the best that we can. We try to respect the rules. This is where she sleeps and where she drives. Um, so there's a little seatbelt that I have for her. Um, so she stays in one place. And the spot down here is actually where I keep I usually keep a longer leash when we're at campsite so she can run a little more free. She's not a well-trained dog, so she can't be off leash. Um, also down there is where her food is. Um, I keep this is just a I reused a, a this is a nut thing from Kirkland. It's a great sealed thing. If I'm in bear country, I put things like this and toothpaste and stuff in my cooler when I move that away from my campsite, but this just kind of stays down here. Probably one of the best things that I purchased that's also not very expensive is what I consider my closet when I'm traveling. When I travel, even though I'm out for a short time, you know, three to four days, I do bring a lot of stuff as far as, am I going on hikes? Am I gonna go to eat at a restaurant? You know, whatever it is. So when you lift this up, this is actually what's called a seat extender. When you lift this up, this is actually my closet. So it's got these little dividers and so I can, it's pretty deep. I can fit quite a bit of clothing and shoes and hats and all that kind of stuff. And what it ultimately was designed for was to extend the seat for the dog so she can lay down. That's for any, that's not a car camping thing. That's just a car thing. Um, it wasn't very expensive and it's probably become the most handy thing just because I can stay organized. Besides the fact that I always have <laughs> dirty shoes and dirty clothes that, that are thrown in there, it works. It's not a perfect fit. I don't think it's a perfect fit for every vehicle. I think it's a little bit, um, it's not all the way to the ground. I usually don't zip it. I'll just kind of keep it like that. And it's secure for her so she can lay freely. She also has her water bowl that I tuck down here. That's her, also her backpacking bowl. And that's Luna's space. She feels comfortable and safe. And there's always a lot of dog care. And then up here, again, this is drive mode or this is sleep mode, this is not drive mode, but I have my Yeti, um, this is the 35. This is a perfect size for me for about three to four days. Sometimes I only do frozen water bottles, sometimes I do ice, if it's really hot. I don't mind, it's just weekends, so it's not a problem to have some ice. If I were a going out for a longer period of time, I might do something like a refrigerator. I got the color, it was a limited edition color because it's fun. I'm very black and white in a lot of my color choices. I thought it would just be fun brighten my day and it's a cooler you know um I got the Yeti that was uh, my recent I got that about four months ago uh it's expensive I can't remember how much this one was I want to say a few hundred dollars it's it's an investment the reason I got it was I do go to bear country I live at the southern part of the Sierra Nevada range and so I go up um in the Sierra Nevadas a lot and I want to be able to keep my stuff safe and keep the bear safe because that's critical if they get too comfortable with human food and unfortunately that creates problems for them. So it was well worth it. I had a yard sale, I made some money, I bought it and I'm really happy that I did. Also up front is I keep my camping table and I also keep my longer um, window covering. Now when I go into drive mode, those actually just lay on the bed area that's still folded down. I also have a little toiletry bag down here. I just kind of keep that tucked down here. Not that exciting. Um, my glove compartment, you know, I keep the basic car stuff. 
Um, I have my America the Beautiful Pass. And then in my little compartment in between the seats, I'll usually keep power source. I've got a anchor. Um, I don't have a power station. I would like to get one someday, but for me, the power, the little, you know, tiny ones really work well just to charge my cell phone and that's all I need. The last thing that is uh, really, I didn't know when I bought this vehicle <laughs> that it would be so handy and I've never had a sunroof before this vehicle is um, there's this really huge sunroof and this does two things for me. This gives me great natural lighting. Um, so it does have a screen that I can close if I need to, but oftentimes I keep it open and it just, it kind of naturally wakes me up. It also has the ability to have this little area to open. So even when I'm winter camping, um, the coldest I've done is, I think I've gone down to 12 degrees, um, which is, which is chilly. It leaves me, it lets me have some airflow and between me and the dog, if I don't have a little airflow, it can, <laughs> it can cause problems. So just having that little bit cracked every single trip is really quite convenient. Being able to look at the stars at night is probably the best thing. Nothing beats it. I mean, unless you're actually sleeping outside. The other thing I know a lot of people have asked me is how do I feel safe or am I scared or, Oh man, the, the questions are endless around that. Um, I, I, I started this when I bought a home um, and I couldn't really afford to do what I used to do, which is a lot of solo international traveling. I did that one big trip each year for most of my adult life. I love traveling. I love meeting new people and exploring and trying new food. You buy a house and then all of a sudden your money just goes right into that house. And so I think that this was finding SUV camping was two things. I didn't have to go out and buy a van. I could adapt my, my regular driving vehicle, make it into this mini micro SUV, RV, whatever you want to call it. And I could use it as my daily driver. I also love having the off-roading capability. This is a Trailhawk, um, which is kind of Jeep's more off-road line. It's not a major off-roading vehicle, but it does have a little decent lift. It's got all-terrain tires. Um, I feel safe in it. And when you go to a lot of free campsites, like this one coming in here, it would be tough in some two-wheel vehicles without that clearance. So for me, it's really important to be prepared, plan in advance. If I feel uncomfortable, I'll leave. Um, and if I really was desperate, um, I haven't, but if I was really desperate, I could go and get a hotel or something like that, or just drive. I usually have about three camping locations planned out. I'll try the first one. And then if that one doesn't work, if I don't feel safe there, if I don't like it, I can, you know, have, I have, I have gone to the third one before. So I do think having three has helped me. You know, you can use safety measures that you feel comfortable with. I've said this to people, don't go out and get something just for SUV car camping because you think it's gonna make you feel safe. If you aren't comfortable using something, you're not gonna be good at using it in, when you actually need to. So use what you, you feel safe with and, um, you know, be prepared, use, use common sense. It's hard to travel with the dog. It's also ex is expensive to board her. So this has been such a blessing. I pay for my gas. I allow myself to eat out one time per trip because I like food and I like to go and try some new places. So if I'm out for three to four days, I will go to one restaurant that usually has a patio where I can sit there with the dog. And um, other than that, I bring all my food, it keeps the cost really low. So on average, my trips range from about 100 to $150 and you can't beat it. The only time I ever pay for camping is if I'm at the coast. The California coast, um, which I'm about two hours from, is really hard to find free camping. There's some really good spots in Big Sur, but um, there's been some mudslides that have made those um, not available. So uh, you just do what you can do. You do some research and if you have to pay, you have to pay. It's usually not too bad, but I try to, I try to camp for free because I'm pretty cheap. <laughs> Highly recommend this vehicle if you're looking for a small SUV. I'm not plugging Jeep in any way. Um, it's just, it's perfect for me and, and what I have to use it for. It's got some decent gas mileage and um, we're really comfortable. I have a YouTube channel that is kind of just sharing my adventures out with my dog, Luna. Um, that one is called City Girl Unplugged. I used to live in San Francisco and then I moved to the middle of nowhere. I bought a house in a rural part at the southern base of the Sierra Nevadas and we have a couple acres and it's a little A-frame cabin and we absolutely love it. I also have a second channel, which is my first channel. That's around my small business. I'm a reseller. I sell used items mostly on eBay and Poshmark and uh, 
So that is my main channel that provides a little bit of income. It also helps with some of my sales and I share things so that people can learn how to resell um, brands to look for and stuff like that. If you want to follow us and see our adventures, mostly in California, um, it's a rare time when I get, get out of the state because we are weekend only. We're kind of limited in that six hour up to six hour range. Um, just so that we don't spend too much time driving and uh, so mostly California we do the beach we do the mountains we occasionally do the desert which is a lot of great free camping and um, that's it my second channel is common tags my, my car camping channel is city girl unplugged and uh, you can come hang out with us there Thanks again, Courtney, for sharing your rig with us. And uh, again, I'll put links to all of her stuff to her two channels in the video description. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and we'll both be patrolling those and, and making sure we try to answer your questions as best we can. Uh, thanks again for watching. And if you are somewhere in the Western US and you have a, an SUV that you'd like to share with the world, go to SUVRVing.com, shoot me an email and maybe we'll cross paths on the road and share your rig with the world. And uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.